Good morning, Lemon. Good morning, Pastor Kathy. It's great to be with you as always. And I want to say thank you to the ladies' aid for the lovely poinsettia, which I'm going to put down here. You guys are trying to make me call again. Um, <laughs> my middle name is not Grace. <laughs> It's wonderful to be here together this morning. Let's stand and sing, I want to walk as a child of the light, number 206, in your red hymnal. Let us proclaim the story of the one who is coming 
and yet is already as close as our own breath. We have come to watch and worship with fierce joy. We wait for Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's take a moment to center ourselves and prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God of joy, we rejoice in the reality of who you are, the source of living joy within us. Our contentment comes and goes. Our happiness ebbs and flows. Our feelings change with our circumstances, but our joy is deeply rooted in our identity as your beloved children. It is a fierce joy that flows through us as a gift from the Holy Spirit. This deep joy fills us up and overflows as gratitude and thanksgiving, lighting the path before us. Thank you, Holy One, for this abundant grace. Amen. people were surrounded by hardship, suffering, and grief. Isaiah proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. We come today as people who who are also surrounded by suffering and grief, and yet the spirits hover among us, tender, tendering, tending, and anointing, inspiriting freedom. Where there are captives declaring blessings and peace in places the world has cursed and igniting fury, joy, where mourning and heart ache prevail. We wait as people who experience hardship and pain, yet we are called to witness to the persistent joy that sustains our life as God's people. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, just peace and fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light who lives in our hearts as we wait and work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The, Lord, the year of the Lord's favor. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oils of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. 
They will call oaks of righteousness, righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They re will reveal, rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people of the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed, arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head with a, like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. The word of God for all of God's people. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 126 on page 847. We will be singing Response 2. And Lauren will play it through once for us, and then we'll sing it where you see the R. He answered, No. 
Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had sent, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The word of God for all to hear. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. For the past three weeks, we've been working through this book, Choosing the Faithful Path. This week, in addition to considering those scriptures, We'll be looking at chapter 4. I hope that you are reading along. If you are, read chapter 5 during the coming week. 2,000 years ago, a long time ago, a man was traveling, walking from Nazareth down to Bethlehem with his young, very pregnant wife, who sometimes walked, and sometimes rode their donkey. The trip would take them <coughs> about a week, maybe a little less. The story of the Messiah is a story about movement, journeying, spiritual movement. We, too, need to keep moving. Following Jesus through our worship and prayers is only part of being a disciple. Being a disciple means making disciples. To make disciples, you have to move. You have to share your faith, your life, your joy. You have to accept the guidance and sending of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus came to dwell among us, Isaiah and John the Baptist proclaimed his coming. They were inspired to do this by the Spirit of God. The Gospel of John speaks of a man sent by God. That man was John the Baptist. People wanted to know who he was, as you just heard. The Gospel tells us he, meaning John the Baptist, came as a witness to testify to the light, meaning Jesus, the Messiah, so that all might believe through him. John the Baptist himself was not the light. He came to testify to the light. People asked John, but who are you? Are you Elijah? And John said, no, no, no. I am the voice of of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. John was quoting the words of Isaiah chapter 40, which we heard last week. So John the Baptist was sent by the Spirit to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. Imagine if he'd said that week, you know, I am really busy, I'm full, there's so much going on. I can't go to the Jordan River and baptize people. My schedule is full. In today's reading from Isaiah 61, Isaiah says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort 
those who mourn, to give people in need the things they need. Isaiah was telling the people that God was with them, to give them hope. God had good news for them. It was time to rejoice. Then when Jesus came into the world, when God came into the world, light came into the world. Jesus, according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, as a grown man, went to the synagogue to worship, and he was handed on the Sabbath the scroll of Isaiah. And Jesus read these words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. That's Isaiah 61, which we heard this morning. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And Jesus said, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. He was telling them that the words of the prophet had been handed down over the centuries and that he was now the one anointed to bring good news to the poor and oppressed. He was telling the people that God was with them to give them hope, just as he had been with them during the time of Isaiah, to give them hope, to bring good news, to tell them it's time to rejoice. Then when Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, he went to his 11 remaining disciples and said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go to the people of all nations and make them disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teach them to do everything I have told you. I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. Jesus told his disciples, go. This is reported in Mark 16, Luke 24, John 20, and Acts 1. Those disciples have passed on to eternal life now. We are the new disciples of Jesus. So those words are now passed on through the centuries to us. Jesus says, go, make disciples. Jesus did not say, build it and they will come. He did not say, hire an architect, make a cozy little place to come and worship me. He never said that. He said, go. He didn't say, meet, have a good time together, and wait for people to show up. He really didn't. He said, go. Go outside the walls of the building and the walls of your life. Do what Jesus did and the first disciples did. If you are baptized, the Holy Spirit is with you, and you have been given authority to bring good news to the poor and the oppressed. You have been commanded to bring good news. You've been given authority to testify to the light by the things you say, and the things that you do. Does this mean that you have to be perfect? Or pretend to be perfect? Like Jesus? No, in fact, pretending to be perfect is called hypocrisy. And Jesus hated hypocrisy. Jesus loved Peter. 
because Peter was authentic. He was honest and he loved Jesus and wanted to please him, but he was not perfect. He did become more and more like Jesus over time. And that's what Jesus wants from us, to be like him, to become more and more like him, and to make disciples. So we need to be honest with people about our faith, about the struggles. We have to be diligent to nurture our faith, because we can't nurture other people's faith very well if our own faith is a wreck. If our own faith is battered and fallen apart half the time, who wants a faith like that? We can't bring people to Jesus with that. We bring people to Jesus with joy. Joy, knowing that God loves us. If we accept the teachings of Jesus, we must live out those teachings in our lives, inside and outside the church walls, every day of the week. We have to live in a way that shows that we really love people, all sorts of people, and you can't fake that. We may not always understand the things that people say or do, but that doesn't give us the right to blame them or talk about them or judge them. Sometimes we get sucked into conversations where we start complaining about things that have happened to us. Because we had a bad day, and we start blaming the other people involved. We vent our frustrations, and suddenly, the conversation turns into these broad generalizations of blame about an entire group of people that we've never met, whose circumstances we don't know, and we condemn them because we're upset about something that happened us. Did Jesus act that way? No. He showed compassion. He tried to put himself in the place of the other person. And we need to remind ourselves that when a person annoys us, and somebody always does, that they are loved by God. And we are called to love them. So we need to take a breath and count to 10 or 20 and be like Jesus. You know, a lot of research has been done over the years to figure out why church attendance is declining. Why don't so many people go to church anymore? Part of the answer is that there are more and more people who weren't raised in the church because their parents stopped going and they really don't know what goes on here. Those folks are called the nuns, N-O-N-E-S. They don't know church. They, their faith is none. They have no faith in Christ because they've never been reached by the church. But there's a pretty large group of people who used to go to church regularly and don't go anymore. You can probably think of a few of them. Researchers call this group the Duns, D-O-N-E-S. They are done with church. Why? According to a book called Church Refugees, they left the church to save their faith. Many of them used to be committed church attenders who gave a lot, prayed a lot, and attended a lot of meetings. And they left because of judgmental people, exhausting power structures that stifled progress, and the feeling that they weren't even allowed to ask important questions about God and faith. They left because so many Christians spend so much energy condemning people and little to no energy caring for the poor and oppressed and trying to break down 
unfair systems. Is that who we are? I hope not. I hope that we're like Jesus more and more every day. Jesus called the church to bring good news to the poor and oppressed. Jesus called the church to be one body with different parts, with different gifts, working together to be Jesus in the world, to be Jesus. God came down to earth as a baby who grew into a man to show us how to live so that we could show other people so we could be Jesus in our community. We've been anointed to bring good news to the poor. Rejoice! Go! For one who is greater has come. Take the good news to people. Plant seeds of joy in their hearts. Let's sing together, O come, O come, Emmanuel, God with us. And we're going to start with verses 1 and 2 for now. It's number 211. 211. Please stand as you're able. read it together. O merciful God, we confess that we have failed to be witnesses each time we fail to acknowledge you as the source of our successes, our substance, ourselves. We have allowed religious words and forms to substitute for going to, meeting with, and caring for the people you have called us to love. Holy God, if we encountered a man and a pregnant girl, travelers seeking a room, we are not sure what we would do. Would we welcome them, strangers from another place? Would we help them, seeing their desperate need? Forgive us, compassionate Redeemer, source of all joy, and grant us the opportunity to start over again. Keep us from repeating the mistakes of the past, 
or from new evils that mislead and destroy. In the name of Christ, we offer our earnest prayers for pardon and deliverance. Amen. Receive the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let's sing a couple more verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, to 11, verses 5 and 7, which are on the right. So if you want to meet more people, <laughs> come on down. I'm sure somebody could give you directions, and we'd love to have you. And our dear Lauren will be playing Christmas carols. And St. Nick is going to come, too. If you have any children in the area, St. Nick is going to be there. Um, we also have one more Wednesday Advent service at Tonkanic United Methodist. Pastor Tenney's going to be preaching on Wednesday at noontime, and there's lunch afterwards. Another great place to meet people. Um, and our Bible study will be Thursday evening on Zoom. And just a reminder, next week, between Christmas and New Year's, there will not be Bible study. So I'm going to be visiting my in-laws in Delaware. Anything you would like to, us to pray about? besides these upcoming events and safe travels for everyone. Yes, Donna. I just want to just add that next Sunday we, the Christmas Eve services, they are listed down there on the bottom of the track of us. Yes. So we're having a service here at 10, and then we're having uh, one at 6.30 as well. There will be candlelight at both of those services. So. And do we have... a the morning service on Christmas Eve at 10 is going to be a, a festival of, um, what's it called, carols and scriptures? Yes. 
<laughs> is that what it's called? Anyway, it's <laughs> it's um, short scripture reading and then a carol, a couple verses, and then another reading, a festival. Anyway, it's yeah, something like that. So that's what we'll be doing in the morning, and we will be ending with silent night um, and candlelight. And then if you want to come back, or you can choose one or the other, it's up to you. At 6.30, um, Kathy Gardner will be leading a service, and that will also have plenty of scriptures and carols, correct? Yes, lady, yes, thank you. And I I will be using the Gospel of Luke. and by a little bit of fellowship. Oh yes, fellowship, absolutely, yeah, fellowship. Yes. Good move. And I'll be using the Gospel of Luke, and you're gonna use the Gospel of Matthew? Yes, and some Luke. And a little bit of Luke, okay. So, great. Do we have everybody signed up for all the scripture readings, do you know? For years, yes. Okay. And I'll be in touch with people this week uh, for the evening service. Okay, and I will email the scriptures out to everybody. If you don't have email, you're on your own. No, we will. <laughs> Michelle, I can send it to you in Messenger, but uh, we'll make sure we have a printed copy. I'll be printing this week. I'll print copies of all of them, so you don't have to worry about it. What's that? Send her a pigeon. So, oh, yeah, there you go. How do I know where, where this was? I'll look up. You can look it up. There you go. Easy peasy. Yeah, Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, um, and and I I don't usually do this, but I, since we have Ed here and he doesn't know us that well, I want to share with you that um, one of the things that we do when we go to give good news to the poor is um, volunteers from the church take meals from the soup kitchen in Tonkanic to several families around the church every Friday. Um, which is one of the things, one of the many things that um, have been going on to care for our neighbors. So, anyway, so I should be quiet. It's very difficult, but uh, does anyone have any <laughs> prayers that concerns or joys they'd like to raise? Yes, Michelle. Two. I just want to thank everybody that helped Wednesday after luncheon. We had lots of compliments about the amount of food and the treats that we had and the decorations. That was for the ladies' aid. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Wednesday at Tonkanic. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday at Tonkanic, yes. Yeah. Yes, we hosted last week at Tonkanic. Um, and the concern. Prayers for my husband. Oh. Okay. He's in the hospital. Um, he had an appointment on Friday. He went to his appointment. And he goes to the VA. And um, after his appointment, he thought, well, I'm just going to stop down to the ER and get some cough medicine because I had a cold while we walked. So we did. And they checked his heart, of course, and they said, do you know your heart is racing? It's all over the place. And he goes, no. He goes, they said it was. He, w he was in AFib. So they put him in the hospital. He still did it. Supposedly from the home care. Oh, my I'm goodness. But he's doing all right. He's fine. He's doing all right. He might be there tonight. If he comes home, he'll probably come over because the little ones are Okay, yeah, drag him over. Yeah. So with medicine and change of diet, which won't be easy. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's never easy. Yeah. <laughs> so prayers for Donnie. Oh, gosh. Yeah, prayers for Donnie. Okay. Sorry. Just what you needed. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Sally. Still sore and tender, but I can use it a lot better now. So you're making progress. Yes. Can you eat tonight? Yes. It's gonna be a lot of food. Well, uh, soft food. So oh. I mean. Okay. I'll make sure yes, to cook my vegetables <laughs> enough. <laughs> Kathy. Um, I had a joy that the prayers were answered yesterday. Was wreaths across America um, ceremonies at the two cemeteries that. Um, our chapter hosts, and uh, we had finally, after five years, that I've been involved in the grief 
Indies across America. We had a nice day. <laughs> and uh, everything went well. We, it was a beautiful were, day. Yeah. yeah. There were um, about 120 wreaths placed at the Bond Cemetery and 36 placed at Veterans Graves at Strickland Hill, which Strickland Hill is a really small cemetery, but it was all good. We had a good turnout and it went well. Wonderful. Prayers were answered. And thank you for doing that. Yes, Gail. I had a joy of Lady Faith. Thank you for that. And then I have a prayer for my two nephews. One drove up from Florida and the other one lives here in Pennsylvania. They found their mom dead oh, um, on the floor. They did a wellness check and she's been dead since October 31st on the floor and no one knew she was there. So when my nephew for the family. Jude and Robbie, what's the last name? Storm. Storm. Storm, if you don't mind sharing. Oh, I should probably say, I am recording, and I'll be posting it on YouTube. So. Um, there's a song. We have our friend Sandy from the Soup Kitchen on the list already. We mentioned her yeah. with some physical issues, but she's really struggling this year. Um, she had to put her, one of her dogs down the other day, so the sadness of the season that can affect people is really hitting her hard, so we appreciate keeping her in your thoughts and prayers. Yeah, not everybody is filled with joy this time for lots and lots of reasons. Prayers for sin. Sandy from the soup kitchen is home. She's doing well. She's the one that had the spot on her lung removed that was bigger than they thought. And then while she was in the hospital, she came down with uh, illness. And she's home. She's doing well. Her cats are taking care of her, as well as a lot of friends So and her family. So she's, she's on the mend. All good. Good, good, good. So there are two Sandys. Yes. Sure, I realized that, but I've been praying for Sandy, so it covers everything. Mm -hmm. Speaking of good food, December thirty first <laughs> is a good Sunday service. The famous clipboard. We are responsible for signs. <clears throat> Ten o'clock at uh, we'll be at the East London United Methodist Church. 
So um, the fifth Sunday, we have a combined service, and the churches take turns. One fifth Sunday, it's here. The next, it's over at East Lemon. So we will be at East Lemon on Christmas Eve, uh, New Year's Eve. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> East Lemon, New Year's Eve, 10 o'clock, followed by pop. If you don't know how to get there, somebody can give you a ride or directions, including me. It's not that hard, and it's on Google. If you have, if you do the, you know, Google Maps, it'll take you there. All right. Are we ready to pray, or do we have more things to raise up? All right. We have. Oh, we have been praying for Lillian. She's here today. So we're going to continue to pray for her. She's not 100 percent yet. So don't stop, never stop praying. Pray in all circumstances. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and every morning with the needs of the world on our hearts and minds. We know you hear us before we lift the names of people up to you. This morning we have lifted many names, many situations, some times of joy, and many times of concern. We thank you for being with all those who are rejoicing and being with all those who are struggling and need comfort. Comfort them, Lord, and help them according to your will. We also need your help, Lord, to be faithful disciples. We know that you call us to use our gifts for the work of witnessing to the world about Jesus Christ. We want the world to know that Jesus loves them and came to save them. We want the world to know the joy that we experience because of his love and forgiveness. Guide us, Lord, so that others see Jesus in us, and we see Jesus in them. Amen. Peace be with you. And also with you. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace. Peace and joy be with you.
Closing him is infant holy, infant lowly, number 229.